I'm repeating what Mr. Lewis Strauss said when the point about the HDB paper was first made, but I think it needs some treatment in, in, in a bit more granularity than what the Leader of the Opposition had time to do just now, because the People's Action Party seems to be doubling down on this incorrect assertion, using its tremendous PR and communicative machinery to repeat this assertion about the Workers' Party HDP paper again and again on social media, in letters to the Straits Times, Taobao. So let me go back to that, and we can read out those two paragraphs. Uh, I'm glad the DPM read our paper, you know, <laughs> we, we, we worked on it. Um, the first paragraph contains observations and poses a question that does not amount to a call to action. The second paragraph is the call to action. The first paragraph makes observations about the risk of vacancies in the context of a paper on longer-term housing dynamics, that resale prices will inevitably come under pressure at some point. And I think the government has acknowledged that. I refer to the exchange between uh, SMS uh, Sima and Professor James Lim, my colleague. Uh, so it's in that context that those observations were made and the questions posed. But the call to action comes in the second paragraph, which says BTO projects should continue. I repeat, BTO projects should continue. It doesn't say BTO projects should continue at a reduced rate. It doesn't say BTO projects should stop. It doesn't say, B you laugh. You laugh. It doesn't say, let me continue. It doesn't say BTO projects should continue, but at 9,000 rather than 70,000. It says BTO projects should continue, and then it goes on to say that you can taper that down in the longer term when our USB proposal kicks in, which would yield flats that could be repurposed as sale of balance flats or, or, or for an expanded public rental scheme. Uh, but that only starts to kick in in about 12 years' time. So I think it is very important to, you know, let, let, let's have debates on our real positions and not mischaracterize one another's positions. And we did not put out a proposal in 2019 that you cut BTO construction if we had wanted to. On the first, on the housing working paper and what the Workers' Party said. Um, I think Mr. Pereira now is sort of uh, alluding to the fact that the, the, the assessment that they have put out was pertaining more to a longer-term concern about a supply overhang. But that's very clearly not what the write-up says. The write-up says, and I read, that private vacancies this is in the private sector have only started to inch down, but there are still around 12,000 private units completing up to 2022. So with that, comparing now HDB, will the HDB have a vacancy rate problem compounded by a still steady stream of 6,000 to 17,000 BTO units in the last few years? which will continue to increase supply up to 2022. The assessment was very clear. There was a concern about short-term overhang, short-term too many supply of new flats. Like I said, I, I experienced it's not just you who was highlighting this concern. I, I, you can check the hindsight. I probably think some PAP MPs must have asked me the same question. I was under a lot of pressure to cut back BTO uh, supply, uh, new flats, the building of new flats, precisely because of the short-term concern. It was not a longer-term assessment. It was a short-term assessment. It was very clear what's written and arising from this assessment, therefore, that the concern that you have to calibrate your building program. Um, Let's, I mean, to me, as somebody who was looking at the working paper then on the receiving end in MND, I, I think it was clear as daylight what the Workers' Party wanted to do. You were not the only one. There were similar concerns expressed by others. So all we are highlighting is let's be upfront and honest that the assessment made at that time was not right. Like I said, many people didn't get it right. Um, no one would have predicted what happened with COVID, but there's no shame in that. And that's, you know, just let's now focus, look forward on coming together to tackle 
what the root cause of the problem is, which is what the PAP government is indeed doing. On affordable... A still steady stream of 16 and 17,000 BTO units in the last few years, which will continue to increase supply up to 2022. If you look at this sentence, what the sentence is saying is not that there is an imminent risk of vacancies, not that there's going to be vacancies in 2022. It is saying that there will be, there, there's a risk of vacancies if you continue to build uh, in following this, this kind of pattern. So there's no time frame attached to that. And I would remind the DPM again that the whole context of our argument and focus on this paper is longer term housing dynamic trends. And more importantly, I'd remind the DPM again that this first paragraph does not amount to a call to action, to a proposal, to a suggestion. We go on to say BTO projects should continue. If we had meant to say BTO projects should be cut back, we would have said that. So I really hope the People's Action Party will stop propagating this falsehood that our 2019 paper called for a cutback to BTO supply in 2019. And if it does not do that, I would really question if the People's Action Party has become a party that propagates falsehoods to gain political mileage. Uh, sir, on the first point, let's not uh, belabor this anymore. I think we, we were just, might as well just publish without what as exactly verbatim whatever the Workers' Party has said in the working paper in 2019, and in the end, Singaporeans will be the judge of, what, of the matter. Um, I think we have said enough on this point. Uh, the reality, as I described it from my perspective at that time, was a very different reality. Uh, and no one, don't talk about cutting, no one at that time even thought about building more flats. It would have been unthinkable. Everyone was asking, cut back, cut back, cut back. No one said build more flats. With the benefit of hindsight, now it's so easy to say build more. But I just want to have some perspective here that during that time when resale prices were coming down, it was a very different context. It was a very different circumstance. And we, were, we can just put out what the Workers' Party said and everyone can be the judge of it. 